Obama has officially announced plans to trash the Constitution. Obama has officially announced plans to trash the Constitution and move forward with a socialist corporatist dictatorship without input from Congress or the American people. He made the announcement Tuesday during a cabinet meeting. We're not just going to be waiting for legislation in order to make sure that we are providing Americans the kind of help they need. I've got a pen and I've got a phone, Obama said. And I can use the pen to sign executive orders and take executive actions and administrative actions that move the ball forward in helping to make sure our kids are getting the best education possible, making sure that our businesses are getting the kind of support and help they need to grow and advance, to make sure that people are getting the skills that they need to get those jobs that our businesses are creating. Article I Section I of the Constitution clearly states all legislative powers reside with Congress. The founders were inspired by the writings of Montesquieu and insisted on three separate branches of government, and instituted a system of checks and balances to prevent tyranny. But I'm also the president of the world's oldest constitutional democracy. There can be no liberty where the legislative and executive powers are united in the same person, Montesquieu wrote. James Madison, writing in Federalist 46, warned that consolidated power at the executive level is the very definition of tyranny. The accumulation of all power, legislative, executive, and judiciary in the same hands may justly be pronounced the very definition of tyranny. But I'm also the president of the world's oldest constitutional democracy. George Washington signed the first executive order proclaiming a national day of Thanksgiving in 1789. Since that time, the Supreme Court has ruled executive orders may not be used to make law, only execute laws passed by Congress. From Woodrow Wilson and Franklin Roosevelt onward, however, presidents have signed a large number of increasingly audacious and unconstitutional executive orders. Obama, lacking the charm of Franklin Roosevelt, nevertheless seeks to follow his path in growing executive power, writes David Davenport. Starting with President Woodrow Wilson, and culminating in Roosevelt's New Deal, progressives sought to undermine the power of the legislature in favor of consolidating power in the executive branch. From passing the sweeping health care reform bill on a party-line vote, to the largest use of executive czars in our history, to initiating new policies on things like immigration and gun control by executive order, Obama seeks to leave 225 years of constitutional separation of powers behind. This needs to be exposed for what it is, a series of constitutional end runs and a power grab by a frustrated and legacy-driven president. Republicans, looking for partisan ammo to attack a Democrat president, will undoubtedly criticize Obama's latest constitutional affront. Executive orders and their gradual evolvement of the imperial presidency is not limited to Democrats, however. Both Republicans and Democrats are fond of referring to the imperial presidency, when someone from the opposite party is in the White House, explains William L. Anderson. Yet both parties have acted to protect and strengthen the presidency, when it was to their advantage. Unless members of the other branches are willing to act on the important principle of decentralization of power, the American experiment will end up being nothing but a footnote of history. This relegation of the American experiment to an irrelevant footnote is precisely what the global elite with a stranglehold on government have in mind. The globalist intelligentsia continue to argue in favor of trashing to constitution. In 2011, CNN contributor Farid Zakaria argued that the Constitution is outdated, and its principles should be debated and fixed to conform with the modern era. He suggested a set of amendments to modernize the Constitution for the 21st century. Adherence to the Constitution is now portrayed as a form of mental illness. Indeed, there is something infantile in the belief of the Constitution worshippers that the complex political arguments of today can be settled by simple fidelity to a document written in the 18th century, the editors The Economist wrote in late 2010. When history is turned into scripture and men into deities, truth is the victim. The Constitution stands between the global elite and their plan to reduce America to an economic and cultural ruin.
natural rights and individual sovereignty are intractable obstacles and must be destroyed if a one-world totalitarian government is to be realized. Obama's latest comments on the plan to impose executive decrees as usual, for the sake of the children sets the stage for the next phase of dictatorial government and the dismantlement of the Constitution and its, re and its relegation to the dustbin of history. But I'm also the president of the world's oldest constitutional democracy. Uh, we are not just going to be waiting for legislation in order to make sure uh, that we're providing Americans uh, the kind of help that they need. Uh, I've got a pen and I've got a phone. Uh, and I can use that pen to sign executive orders uh, and take executive actions and administrative actions that move the ball forward uh, in helping to make sure our kids are getting the best education possible, making sure that uh, our businesses are getting the kind of support and help they need uh, to grow and advance, uh, to make sure that uh, people are getting the skills that they need to get those jobs that uh, our businesses are creating. Uh, and I've got a phone that allows me to convene uh, Americans from every walk of life, nonprofits, businesses, the private sector, uh, universities, uh, to try to bring more and more Americans together around what I think is a unifying theme, making sure that uh, this is a country where, if you work hard, you can make it.